What is up, folks? Hold up. Before we get into this, I'm going to get the link because I had to go live before I get the link. Share. This is just a start. Relax, guys, okay? Copy and link, heading to my Instagram just so I can get some peeps in here. You know what I mean? It's actually my first time ever going live on YouTube, ever. Um, but welcome to today's video, guys. I'm going to wait till a couple people get in here. Um, today, we're going to be reacting to spy shots and test mule shots. Um, as well as like different cars spotted on Nurburgring. Um, we're going to try to keep it to like sports car, exotic cars. There were a couple cars, like some SUVs that were spotted um, on Nurburgring, but some of them were like Hyundais. So I'm not sure if that was a performance SUV Hyundai or just a Hyundai. And they were trying to see how it was on Nurburgring. But um, I have the photos on my phone here. So what I'm going to do is just hop on here. And I'm just going to go through it. I'm literally just going to show you guys the photos as we go. Um, the different cars we're going to be doing today, we're going to be doing a Beamer, uh, two different Volkswagens, uh, two, three different Porsches, a McLaren, a Maserati. Actually, it might be four different Porsches. Yes, four different Porsches. You know, because I'm a, I'm a Porsche lover now, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I guess we're just going to get in this right now. Not wait till everyone gets in here just because this is going to go live after. Um, so we are going to start with the new G80 M3. And look, you can see the, the range in the background. The new G80 M3, um, as I'm sure, is probably, <laughs> is probably the most popular car. And one of the most talked about cars of 2021, um, the G80 M3, is... I, I'm looking forward to that car so much just because I'm a big fan of M cars. Also, it's really hard for me to hear myself when I have these in. It's like I'm playing one of those games. So uh, excuse me. And it's really hot in this room. So this is a rough live stream. Uh, but the G80 M3 is most likely going to be another turboed car. That's kind of an obvious with 2021. Um, the different things about it, it I don't think it's going to have an all-wheel drive system with the ability to do a two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive like the M5 did. Um, on the new M5 competitions, but it does look like we're going to have a rear-wheel drive model and an all-wheel drive model separately. I mean, I'm praying that there is something combined where you can have the best of both worlds because I think the majority of car people would choose a rear-wheel drive um, example over all-wheel drive, but again, that's not always the case. So uh, that is probably the car in the list that is the most further in a production. Uh, Beamer's been doing a lot of like actual promo and like pre-release stuff on the car before its official release. Um, they actually just had the M4 in like a certain kind of livery wrap um, where you could actually see the car. And it is actually very, very, very similar to what people's renders were like. But the renders were based off of the actual test car. So the mules. So obviously there's going to be quite accurate. But I am looking forward to that car. Um, I'm curious what the price point's going to be, but it is absolutely gorgeous. I know that the front grill is like the biggest talked about uh, controversial topic right now, but I think people will get used to it. And I think it looks good. So moving on, we have the Arch Arteon, Archon. Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to be pronounced, but the Arteon R is uh, Volkswagen's new sedan they have coming out. And my guess on that car my understanding of it, I haven't done too much research on it, is that it is pretty much the R line, um, the same engine you're going to find in the new Golf R, the Mark, the Mark 8 Golf R, I'm hot, um, put into a sedan version. I'm not sure if it's going to make more power since the car is probably going to be heavier. Um, I'm not a huge fan. I think it looks cool. It reminds me of the old, what are they called, the CCs or something. Um, it's almost got like an RS7 type vibe. Uh, which should be pretty cool. I don't think it's going to make a ton of power, but it is going to be using the new Mark 8 Golf R engine, to my knowledge, um, which was, at one point, people were uh, theorizing, that's a word, um, that it was going to use the previous-gen RS3 engine, which would have been awesome, but I'm not sure if they're doing that anymore. Um, next up, we have a double, right? Uh, how many? Oh, we're four minutes in this. Next up, we have... Oh. The M5 CS next to the 992 GT3. Um, so we're going to talk about both cars separately. Here's another picture of the um, Nurburgring spotted 99. Sorry for the reflections out here, guys. There we go. Oh, no, there we go. Bottom. That is the 992. So did I say 997? 992 GT3. Um, 
the M5 CS is supposed probably going to be an absolute animal since the M5 comp was just an absolute beast. Um, and the CS version is most likely going to get more track focused uh, options on it, just like the M2 CS, which is coming out. Um, or actually, I think it's already out in Europe. And obviously the M3, M4 CS, that's going to be a car that I'm definitely looking forward to. Uh, just because the M5 was an absolute beast, but I feel like it was more so a beast in a straight line. Um, and also that was the car that actually had the ability to be all-wheel drive, but then also switch to a rear-wheel drive setup where it cuts all the power in the front so you could do donuts or get a little reckless, you know what I mean? Um, and then the 992 GT3 is another one of those extremely, extremely hyped-up cars right now just because the GT3 is insane. Um, a very loved car from Porsche, and it was just released recently um, that they're most likely bringing back a manual in that, which is good and bad. Good because obviously everyone wants a three-pedal car. Um, everyone's really, really excited for a three-pedal car to be released in 2021. That means that as of now, they're not going away completely with manual gearboxes, especially with even new hypercars like the T50 releasing uh, with a three-pedal setup. I think only, yeah. And then um, what other car was that? I don't know. They're just they're trying to keep uh, a manual setups around, which I find really cool. Um, now, the downside with that car is I think it is going to hurt values in the long term of the 901.2 GT3 and GT3 Tourings, both manual setups, uh, which those cars kind of did to the 911R as Porsche just keeps kind of releasing these manual versions of cars that were supposed to be a one of a kind special setup. And then they, you know what I mean? So uh, I think it's debatable whether the new 992 GT3 is going to be the first GT product. I think the first, yeah, the first GT product actually scratch out the first GT product aside from the GT2 um, with a turbo. They might be turboed. You never know just with emissions and everything's kind of changing, but we are getting a manual out of it. So it would be awesome to see that being uh an NA setup, just like the previous gen. Um, so fingers crossed on that. The car looks amazing. And it has that kind of um, club sport style wing on the car. So I'm not sure if that's just like a pre-production test mule wing, or if we're going to see a club sport style, maybe even an actual active aero wing would be really, really crazy to see. Um, next up, we have the Mark 8 Golf R. As you guys know, I owned a Mark 7 previously when I started this channel. Um, looking forward to that car. It looks really good. They did a lot with the uh, the facelift. I'm not sure if they did a ton, but I think it looks good. I mean, there hasn't been an official release of the car yet, so we only really know what's here. Um, they could obviously have swapped out some panels for other stuff. I will be really excited for this car if they release the the previous, I wouldn't say previous because it is the current, but the RS3 engine in this car would be phenomenal, and I would probably consider buying one again uh, just because I love that engine so much, and it was kind of out of a price bracket of the Mark 7 Golf R being MSRP to around $40,000 and the RS3 was like, what, $60,000, something like that. Um, so that would be cool if you got this engine in this car, but we can only hope it could end up being a, a two a two cylinder at this point. Mm. Um, next up is probably, depending, my favorite car on this entire list, the 718 Cayman GT4 RS, a car that people have been waiting for for a very, very long time. And a car that could be the first time a Cayman kind of sits itself in the middle of a 911 range and is severely better than a big majority of the 911s, which Porsches always try to keep the Cayman out of just because it is their smaller car. But I don't see how much they could hold back a 718 GT4 RS when the 718 GT4 is already controversially dipping into the 911s and competing on a track level with a lot of the heavy hitters. The new 718 GT4 ran, I think, by like a second or if not the same track time around Nürburgring as the 997.2 4.0 GT3 RS. Um, I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe which that car was one of the most iconic cars around, you're still going to pay half a million dollars for that car. Um, so the 718 GT4 RS could be absolutely insane. Now, my hopes for this car, I know people are going to say, well, it's an RS product, so it should be PDK. And they just released PDK as an option on the new 718 GT4. But God, do I hope they release a GTR, an RS product in a manual in 2021 would be absolutely insane. I would be 
I would literally sell both my cars to buy that car immediately. Uh, both my cars being the replacement of the NSX, which is confirmed as of right now. But picking it up depends on fires because I'm going to be picking the car up north. As always, somehow I end up buying all my cars up north. And it, as you guys know, California is raging with fires right now. So hopefully that happens as soon as planned. Here's another shot of the GT4 RS, little side view. Obviously rocking, actually for some reason, the red calipers, which typically means steel brakes, but I think those are just carbon ceramics with red calipers, as the last one had yellow calipers. Um, moving on. This is supposedly codenamed the McLaren P15, I believe. Um, this is a weird car just because, here's a couple more photos of it. It almost has a nice like F1 style to it with that front bumper that comes down almost to the floor. Probably one of the best looking cars I've seen testing around Nürburgring. People are suspecting this is like a 675 LT GT R. Um, and I'm not sure how true that is just because to me, it seems like the LT, the 600 and the, or I mean the six. The 650S and the 675 LT seem to be like a prior generation of, well, the Sport and the Super Sport series or whatever they call the LT or the LT, the Long Tail series. Um, but that would be cool if they brought the 675 LT back to do an updated GTR version of it. I'm not sure if it's going to be street legal. Um, it does seem to have the P1 seats in orange that you can see out of the 675 LT. I'm not sure if that means anything with a test car as they kind of just throw other parts on these cars. Um, but looking forward to that. I don't even know what it's going to be. All I know is it looks amazing. And I am a huge fan of the 675 LT, so we should see. Now, next up is another Porsche, a car that's been talked about a lot lately because people don't really know what it is. Um, but there was a Panamera spotted on Nürburgring. And it has a roll cage, carbon ceramics. Um, and supposedly they actually released the Nürburgring time, I believe, on this car. I don't know exactly what it is, but supposedly it's the fastest Panamera they've ever released. Um, so people don't know if it's like a, I mean, there's a lot of theories. It could be a GT division Panamera. I doubt that, but that is a theory. Um, or it could just be the newest version of the Panamera Turbo S. Um which wouldn't make sense though, because it has a cage and it's running track times and the turbo is more of that daily driver uh, car, though the 992 Turbo S is an absolute animal. So I'm not really sure what that car is. People don't really know, but it is really cool. Here is another one of my absolute favorite cars being spotted right now. Supposed to be kind of the modern day MC12 Maserati. I think it's going by the name MC20 right now. Um, here it is. I don't know if I have another. Yeah, I have another photo of it at night right here. To me, it almost looks like a 4C, an Alfa Romeo 4C, an actual proper car size, right? Um, which obviously can increase the weight, which doesn't really matter. It could be all carbon, so you never know. Um, but I think for me, the 4C and like the Avora and the Elise are too small of cars. Like, I, I don't know if I would feel good spending all my money on that small of a car when this is actually a proper sized supercar, maybe it's going to be a hypercar. I think it's using a twin turbo V6 unit. Um, some people say it's using a Ferrari engine. Uh, so I don't really know. I haven't done my research too much on this car. All I know is it looks awesome and it's going to be debatable because Maserati hasn't made a performance supercar in a very long time. The leader of its lineup has been the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, MC Stradale for a little while, which isn't really a talked about car, not a really popular car and not the best performing car around. But the MC MC 12 is one of the greatest cars of all time, suspect, uh, supposedly. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, no, that is not the Senna by any means. Um, and then next up, actually the last car on our list is the car that I am the most interested in out of all these cars. And I know I said that was the GT4 RS, but I lied because I found out about this car yesterday. It looks like this and like this. So as you can see, it is pretty much a Turbo S, a 992 Turbo S with a classic ducktail on it. Um, and the craziest part about all this is in the videos that they have leaked of this driving around Nürburgring, it doesn't sound like PDK, it sounds like a manual. Now. I didn't think they were going to release any version of the 992, 992 Turbo S in a manual just because they had done so much with uh, 
the new transmission and putting all the torque down at pretty much every given time of the power band where the old one was kind of limiting torque along the way. And that's why the new 992 Turbo is so crazy. So I didn't think they'd be able to swap the transmission and still utilize that. And maybe they, maybe they aren't able to utilize that. But if there's a 992 Turbo that comes out, and this is spe suspected to kind of be like a modern day 911 uh, Sport Classic version of the car. But if they release the new 992 Turbo, powertrain, everything in a manual transmission and offer buckets, lightweight buckets, I will sell my entire life to buy that. So that is the car I'm probably the most excited about. Second or for, uh, second up would be the GT4 RS. Um, I'm in a huge Porsche craze, as you guys could probably tell through the vlogs. Um, but yes, I'm kind of just reading your guys' comments right now. If you guys want to see a part two to this video or a part two to my last video where I rated YouTubers' cars, let me know which YouTubers or let me know which test mules um, slash spy shots you want me to do. Those are kind of the most modern updated ones I could find right now. Obviously, there's some other cars, a couple like Kia and Specs, Hyundai and Specs, Kia. Uh, there's a bunch of new cars that I am not too familiar with, and I don't even know if they'd really jump into that sports car, supercar performance level, but I could be wrong. Um, so McLaren uses 675 LT chassis to test the Senna under code P15. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay, I didn't know that. I was kind of just looking around <laughs> um, just now, and I just found that. So when the Senna was coming out, I never actually saw those spy shots at all. Uh, so for that, I guess you guys got a little throwback. Um, or if you didn't know that the Senna was tested under the P15, that's cool. Which I was going to say wouldn't make sense because why would they be releasing a modern version of a 675 LT or using an older chassis? You'd think they'd use like a 600 LT chassis right now if they were testing for a future car or the 720S or something like that. Um, but with that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoy this live. Uh, if you guys are watching secondhand, subscribe. If you guys are new, like the video if you enjoy. And I actually leave Michigan today, so I'll be back with normal programming and actual physical content. I have a lot of cool stuff for you guys. Uh, I'm actually planning, I'm actually going to be doing a big rally. I'm trying to plan some sort of road trip for 2021, actually for maybe even end of 2020 uh, with the NSX replacement. So look forward to that. I love you guys and uh, peace. I'm going to end it.